Hey there friends, Jeff Fritz here, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about getting started with .NET Aspire. We've seen a handful of videos in this series already that introduce what .NET Aspire is, help you get started setting up your workstation so you can build with .NET Aspire, and even start to configure your application, your application system to work with .NET Aspire. And today, we're gonna talk about service discovery and how you can set up the various components of your application so they can discover each other using a friendly name instead of having to set up some sort of DNS or caching and passing around names of local host and port numbers. Ugh. We're going to make this a heck of a lot easier for you to build and connect those components of your application system. Now, there's a link just below in the description that'll get you into our GitHub repository that has the slides, the text, the instructions, as well as all of the sample code that you need to participate in this part of the video series. All right, so let's take a look. I'm using Visual Studio Code here, and I'm going to be working at the command line. But if you're working on Windows with Visual Studio, or maybe you're working in Visual Studio Code and you want to use some of the tools in the command palette there, you can do that. I'm going to work at the command line because I want to make sure that everybody sees that these tools work no matter where it is that you are in the .NET ecosystem. All right. So service discovery, this is that ability to connect services together and reference each other. Now, our Weather Hub project, when we left it, had, had two websites. It had an API called API and a website called My Weather Hub. And it, it, the API would connect out to the National Weather Service here in the United States and get information about weather forecasts and weather station information to present. And the My Weather Hub would format that nicely and allow us to search and interact with that data. Well, if we look at the project, we'll see that there's actually information inside the My Weather Hub project that specifies here's the endpoint to get to that API. You're going to go to localhost 5271 to query and interact with that data. And I don't like having to hard code that because that means when I get into a, a production space, whether it's on servers that are running in my data center or it's running on a cloud service or some other hosted service, I've got to remember to maintain this thing. And that can be dubious, particularly if, if for some reason my API falls down and I need to reroute and connect to another API service that runs somewhere else. I want to be able to just generically reference, right? Abstractly reference my API and be able to get to that location. And that's where service discovery is going to help us. So we're going to dive in and we're going to create a reference from our My Weather Hub project over to the API. And we're going to do it in the App Host project by adding this line right here. Check that out with reference API. Let me show you. So here I am inside the program CS file of my App Host project. And where I added the project for my weather hub here, I'm going to add a reference using the with reference command here to our API project. And notice I use the API variable name there. Now, right, I could, I could rename this to, um, right, to my API. And it's the same variable that I'm referencing there. And that makes this connection from the weather web application to the API. Additionally here, I want to take that web project and I want to expose that to the outside world. I want to make sure that when folks navigate to my distributed application, they get to the weather hub, not the API. And I want to hide that API behind the firewall. So, I can expose the Weather Hub website 
by saying with external HTTP endpoints. And that configures the Weather Hub project to be available as an external facing web address. So now that they reference and know about each other, let's actually take the information about the API and put that into the website. Now, the website starts up and configures a base address to connect out to the API using a URL it gets from this weather endpoint entry inside app settings. And that's, that's what we saw earlier over here in app settings JSON, weather endpoint. And instead of pointing to localhost, we can change that and make it a little bit easier to work with by saying instead of localhost, we can just say API like that. Notice I'm doing HTTPS plus HTTP. That says, try the secure connection first. And if it doesn't, go ahead and fail over to an insecure connection. But the API name there, it's going to discover exactly where that is and make that connection. I don't have to have a, a fixed domain name or host name or a port address. It's just going to go find it and connect automatically between the two. Let's start the application, the app host now, and see how the connections are made and how this all works together. So here I am back in the dashboard. Let me try the website. There's the website and I can click through. And it's, it's clearly loading data for these Alaskan weather sites. Good. But if we go back over to app host here, we can see in the details of our website that it's making a connection down here. Look at that services API. Look at that way down there. And it has an HTTP connection and an HTTPS connection location. These are variables that are being passed in as environment variables. And if we click into these, we can see it's making an HTTP connection to localhost 5271. That's what we had inside of our app settings JSON. Or it's going to make an HTTPS connection to localhost 7032. So it knows how to find and connect to those automatically. That's really great stuff that helps to make it easier to run our application and discover where these things are scattered throughout our application system. No longer do we have to remember exactly which port is which port, just reference that friendly name API that we gave inside of our app host. I can just reference that and it will load up and properly interact with that inside of our .NET Aspire system. That could be any text there. It's up to you what you want to call your components inside of your system. What matters is that you keep that consistent and use that same string everywhere throughout your distributed application. All right, that's all that we have for this episode about service discovery. I've got two more episodes for you. The next one, we're gonna talk about adding additional components into our application system and how that helps make our distributed application a little bit more interesting. In our final episode, we're gonna talk about how we can take what we've built here and turn it into something that we can distribute and run on other production grade systems, whether it's in your own data center or out on the cloud. My name is Jeff Fritz. Thanks so much for watching.